And I think the next is uh, vendor Yuri. Yuri, come on up. Uh, hi, I'm Yuri Ostrovsky. I'm here representing Persistent. Uh, it's really a pleasure uh, for this to be our second year in a row uh, that we're sponsoring this uh, I2B2 Transmart uh, conference. Um, I'll start by telling you a little bit about who Persistent is. Uh, so we are a services provider. We provide talent to work on projects. We focus on uh, product development. Uh, we work in a number of different technologies uh, from AI to cloud services uh, to IoT applications and we're in various uh, sectors, uh, banking, uh, manufacturing, software technology, and of course, healthcare and life sciences. Uh, we're about a half a billion dollar a year company, uh, 10,000 employees, and in 15, uh, more than 15 different countries. Uh, here's a little map of where we are, a strong presence in North America and Europe, uh, as well as Asia. Uh, so we work with a number of different healthcare and life sciences uh, companies. Um, here's a, a, a sample. Uh, we work with providers, research institutions, uh, life sciences, pharma, um, as well as uh, payers, uh, one of which is partners. So my gig actually is uh, a few blocks away from here. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a bit. Um, so within healthcare, we focus on four different areas, uh, clinical care, such as uh, point of care, uh, clinical decision support, uh, translational research, patient engagement, things like apps and, that uh, are used by patients, uh, and hospital operations. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of our big partners is Partners Healthcare. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're doing together with partners. Uh, we also have a collaboration with um, the Connected Health Group uh, here at, at Partners uh, called Pivot Labs. Uh, Pivot Labs is a very innovative uh, model uh, for folks like us, and I think maybe uh, for almost everyone. So Connected Health, the, the folks at Partners provide um, various expertise in uh, data sciences, but also access to clinicians, access to patients, uh, while we provide the technology uh, expertise to be able to take projects that might start off as pilots and then move into the next stage and then eventually take them to the enterprise level. Uh, so that's a collaboration between persistent uh, and a partner's entity, and that's called Pivot Labs that we just started last year. Um, we also acquired a company called Herald Health, uh, which is kind of like uh, if this, then that, if you've seen that, uh, for, um, for clinical care, allowing doctors to uh, be alerted when something happens uh, uh, with their patients uh, by triggering. That? That's uh, Herald Health, thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we have an implementation here at Partners as well as other places. Uh, and we partner with Mount Sinai and we do a lot of work with Salesforce as well, working with their CRM. Feel free to toss out questions, by the way, that's great. Um, so one of the projects that uh, I'd like to talk to you briefly about is um, IGEA. So IGEA is a platform uh, that uh, Persistent has created along with a team here at Partners, uh, the innovation team at, at Partners. Uh, and the idea is that it is a platform that allows you to accelerate the creation of clinical applications um, at an enterprise level. So uh, basically creating applications that can grow maybe even outside of the, of the institution. And the way that we think this can be successful uh, and effective is to make it open source. So this is an open source initiative that uh, we just announced uh, publicly uh, this past week, and it will be made available in open source imminently. We're just working through the legal, uh, but that should happen literally within a few weeks. Um, as part of the uh, IGEA project, so this is the open source uh, platform that we've created, um, we uh, have a, a component, uh, a, a large component, uh, focusing on I2B2. Uh, the idea is that this is a set of extensions for I2B2 that really enable uh, I2B2 to be used in the context of clinical applications. Um, and that itself will be released soon, again, as open source. So the concept behind these uh, CDI extensions um, is to create this common model uh, for clinical application development which we've seen over and over is really missing. So every time that somebody creates a clinical application, they're often creating their own uh, data model, their own data stores, all the, the, the conventions around accessing that data uh, are very homegrown. And that gets in the way of um, sharing data, of expanding on those applications. And so uh, we're moving towards uh, having I2B2 be that common model. Um, so there are a number of advantages uh, if we can accomplish that. 
one, you have a single point of access for multiple data sources. Uh, so if you have data coming in from your EHR, your um, uh, data mart, uh, and other locations, you can have that in one place. I think everyone here is very familiar with that application. Uh, you have a historical record, so for auditing as well as analysis, if you're doing machine learning, uh, everything is in one place in a common model. Um, and it's also a write back system of record, uh, something which uh, is not as common um, in the I2B2 realm. So if your application is collecting data, you want to write that data back into the same location. So now you have access to both the, the patient data uh, that's generally in the EHR, for instance, but also the data that's generated by the new clinical application that you've created. Um, and fine, yeah, sure. On the write back system, is that? Raw SQL or is that a specific API? API, yeah, using an API. Uh, that that's in the works. You'll hear much more about that later this afternoon uh, when we we have a talk about it. Yeah, sure. Um, and also, it's an opportunity to encapsulate some of the business logic. So if you can put in the business logic which aggregates this data in a common way in a central location, it means that that data that was uh, produced by one application can be reused by another application. So these are many different things that we're kind of putting together uh, to really turn I2B2 into um, a, a very powerful way for clinical applications to grow. Uh, here are a few use cases that we envision for those CDI uh, uh, extensions. Uh, so patient identification and clinical program. Um, obviously, that's kind of near and dear, I think, to everyone's heart here. Um, <clears throat> but the difference here is that you can also use uh, data that's generated by the application. So often there's this kind of loop when you're doing screening with a clinical program in your own application. You want to take that data and put it back into a central data store. Um, the assessment of clinical program uh, outcomes. So uh, if, if your data is in this uh, common store, you can do assessment as you go, and I know from experience that if that's not set up uh, properly at the beginning, uh, it's very difficult to keep progressing in that clinical program to really see where you're at, and then to do the, uh, the learning that you can do uh, based on outcomes in that program. Uh, so again, that common data model is very important for that. Um, also, uh, clinical decisions for the algorithms that you create uh, can be encapsulated into um, I2B2 uh, using these uh, extensions. Um, and finally, driving the human workflow uh, by tracking state of, of the patients as you go. So again, we will be presenting some more on this. Uh, this is definitely a work in progress, uh, and it's, it's a long-term project. But we'll, pre we'll be presenting more details on this at 11.30 uh, today. Uh, so Kavi uh, Wagolikar will be giving a, a demo. I think he's debugging right now to make sure that works uh, for later. Uh, and. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.